Welcome back into the Coach Steve Show. We have not done an episode in a while, but we got episodes coming for you. We've got interviews with great high school and college football coaches going to be coming out, so I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, decided to hop on to talk about something that happened a while back, but I didn't see a lot of people discussing it, so we're going to discuss it uh, today. Uh, the disrespect to Coach Brent Bielema, head football coach at the university, of Illinois, the sign right behind me. Uh, we changed up the background of the podcast because we moved some things around. Uh, but we're going to discuss the disrespect for Coach B. And here's what we're going to talk about with the disrespect to Coach B. A tweet got put out talking about who's the best Big Ten coaches out there. Coach Bielema had a nice little retweet about it. Um, we're going to share that here in just one second. We're going to get the picture up. So this was tweeted by um, One Three or One Sports, wherever you want One Three Sports, On Three Sports, whatever the hell it is. Great stuff. They put out great content with name, image, and likeness, recruiting. They're, you know, great content. And then they put up these things. These are great conversation starters, obviously. They put up a tweet saying, Who is the best coach in the Big Ten? And they only gave you four options. Then they said, Other question mark. It's either Jim Harbaugh, Ryan Day, Coach Fickle, or Coach Franklin at Penn State. Those were your top four. Then it said other. And Coach B retweeted saying, who has the most big titles for Big Ten titles with about four question marks asking for a friend, dot, 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 hashtag fam, I-L-L-Y, hashtag I-L-L. So this started to raise the question, who is the best coach in the Big Ten, and what's your criteria of being the best coach in the Big Ten? I loved this retweet because Coach Bielma loves to stir the pot, is what I call it. He loves to have fun, but it shows that he is paying attention to what people are saying. He retweets things on who has the best D-line in the Big Ten or even the country. He looks at who has the best O-line in the Big Ten in the, big, in the country. Uh, he, he looks at all that stuff. He retweets it. He has fun with it, but he says, you know, this is why I love these things because he's going to wait until the end of the year and let their play talk. So that was his retweet. So it became the question, who do you put top of the Big Ten coaching? Now, the reason why people don't talk about Coach Bielma, kind of like how I didn't think about him when he was getting hired, was he wasn't on the radar because he was coaching in the NFL at the time. And then now he's at Illinois. He's not at Michigan or Ohio State uh, he used to coach at Wisconsin. He's not Penn State. He's not at these schools where they just continually win or just have this history of winning. Illinois might have a streak of a year or two of being decently good, and then they fall down, and that's what Coach Bielma talked about, saying this is not a we're good this year and the next year we're not. We're not here just to win eight games. We're here to win Big Ten titles. So let's discuss Coach Bielma versus those guys we are talking about. We're going to talk about just those four, then we'll bring up another coach later on. So before we get to Big Ten titles, what he was saying, let's talk about those coaches compared to Coach Bielema. Now, Coach Bielema coached at Wisconsin from 2006 to 2012. Then he went to Arkansas from 2013 to 2017. Then he bounced around a little bit of NFL, and now he's back in the Big Ten with Illinois. So let's talk about this. So if we take Jim Harbaugh. Now, Jim Harbaugh coached at Stanford for a little bit. Then he's been at Michigan. He's been at Michigan since 2015. He was at Stanford as the head coach from 2007 to 2010 before he made the jump to the NFL. At his four years at Stanford, he went 29 and 21 uh, for a win total. At Michigan for eight years, he has gone 74 and 25. His overall record is 103 and 46. He has two Big Ten titles, uh, two consecutive for beating Ohio State two years in a row. So Jim Harbaugh, um, he has two straight Big Ten championships. Um, they claim he's a top five coach in the country. He's a really now, I should have said this at the beginning. These are all very good football coaches. Very good football coaches to take nothing away from anybody. This is not me saying, oh, this guy's not a good football coach. They are all great football coaches. This is just a fun conversation. Because I'm going to defend Coach Bielma in Illinois. This is just a fun conversation. Ryan Day is a very good coach, proven. Jim Harbaugh is a very good coach, proven. Coach Fickle did great things at Cincinnati, proven. And Coach Franklin 
when we get to him, I did great things at Vanderbilt and is doing things at Penn State. They are very good coaches. So two Big Ten titles, um, and there's his record. Let's move on to Ryan Day. Ryan Day, he has different coaching stops, but he's only been a head coach since 2018 at Ohio State. Um, he took over as interim. He went 3-0 and that year uh, and then has you know gone on to win a lot of games, made the college football playoff, got into the – National Championships, who has done some good things, continuing on where uh, Coach Urban Meyer had left it off. Um, his five years at Ohio State, he is 45-6. and six, And he has 45-6, and six, and he also has two Big Ten titles, but he also has three college football playoff appearances in that time frame. Done a lot of very good things. Coach Franklin at Penn State. Let's talk about his three years as a head coach at Vanderbilt. People don't do this at Vanderbilt in history terms. Uh, he was a head coach there from 2011 to 2013. Um, in that time frame, he went 24 and 15, and he got them to play off, or the bowl games all three years, six and seven, nine and four, nine and four. People don't do that really at Vanderbilt, so that's some great things. Then he got to Penn State in 2014. And at Penn State, at the nine years, he is 78 and 36. His overall coaching is 102 and 51. He won one Big Ten title uh, in 2016, where he was also Big Ten Coach of the Year. Uh, so he has one Big Ten title there. Uh, coach Fickle is now the head coach at Wisconsin. He took over for that one year with Ohio State. He was a longtime assistant coach there in 2011, took over. Um, for that position, they went six and seven and made it to a bowl game and lost in the Gator Bowl. Then he did not become a head coach again until 2017 when he took over at Cincinnati. Um, his six years as a head coach at Cincinnati, he went 57 and 18. They made it into the playoff game uh, in 2021 uh, when they went 13 and one. And they had to play Alabama and found out real quick what Alabama was. But that was a very good year. And he had good years at Cincinnati. Started rough at four and eight, then went 11 and two, 11 and three, nine and one, 13 and one, nine and three. Um, he got to coach in the bowl game for Wisconsin. So they have already given him a win at Wisconsin. Um, so one year at Ohio State, six and seven, six years at Cincinnati, 57 and 18. Overall, he is 64 and 25. No. Big Ten title as a head coach. He has him as an assistant coach. Um, so I don't know if you're going to take that into consideration when you're talking about who's the best coach of the Big Ten when it comes to Luke Fickle. Um, he's part of nine Big Ten conference titles, seven as an assistant coach, two as a player, uh, two national championship squads, and 15 postseason games at Ohio State, including two college playoff because he was an assistant for a long time. Um so when they talked about those guys, I don't think you should put Luke Fickle up as the best coach in the Big Ten because, no offense to him, again, great football coach, has done some really good things. This is not me bashing on him whatsoever. I just think you don't put him in the conversation yet because he needs to get a season under his belt in the Big Ten and see what he does at Wisconsin. Try to get Wisconsin back to what they were doing, especially when Coach Bielma was the head coach there. Because Wisconsin is still a tough school. I just don't know if you put him into that position. Before we even get to Coach Bielma, a coach that's not even up there, uh, who's been a longtime coach at Iowa, is Kirk Ferentz. He um, does have two Big Ten titles. Now, they haven't been since 2004. They have Big Ten West divisions in 2015-2021. Um, has a lot of wins. He's been there for a very long time. He's only been the head coach at Iowa since 1999. 1999. They've had up and down years, but he's been the head coach there for 24 years. He is 186 and 115 with two Big Ten titles. He has been to 19 bowl games. They are 10 and 9. Um, I don't know why his – I mean, it does say other question mark, and no offense to Luke Fickle, but once you put him up there, he's been there a very long time. Um, other schools, they've rotated through some coaches. Um, you know, Tom Allen's, Tom Allen's a good coach, but just hasn't done all those things yet. Um you know, so they've got tons of good coaches there. Um, so I just don't know why his name was not put into that conversation because he has done a lot of good things at Iowa. It's done things to annoy us as Illinois fans because they are pretty physical in football and they have been since he's been there. I think maybe it's just the up and down years. You know, they'll go from 
They went 11 and 2, 10 and 3, 10 and 2 from that 2002 span to 2004. Then they dropped down to 7 and 5, 6 and 7, 6 and 6. Then they get to 9 and 4, 11 and 2. So it's just a lot of fluctuating there. But I think they also know they have it pretty good with him. I don't know why his name was not there. Now on to Coach B. The reason why I don't think they put his name up there, number one, they're going to say, well, he's coaching at Illinois, and Illinois is not a top-tier program. Okay, you have some arguments there, but look at what he's done the first two years there. Look at where Illinois football was before he got there. Lovey Smith had to put the glue there. I don't care what people say about Lovey Smith. He had to come in after the Tim Beckman stuff and try to put the glue back together. And what better way to do that than have a guy that's been in the NFL to do that? Didn't get the things he wanted out of that tenure with Lovey Smith. So Coach Bima had to come in and even said, like, this had to be put back together with more than just scotch tape. It's got to be put back together and built the right way. So he's come in. He did good things the first year, which he found disappointing. Then they go 8-5 and five where they were ranked in the college football playoff for the first time. They were poised to get to the Big Ten title game and then just couldn't finish it out. And he has recruited well. But that's why they're going to say he's not considered when they put guys up there because he's at Illinois. And I also think because it's been a long time since he coached in the Big Ten, and I think maybe they don't count that. And I don't know why you wouldn't count that because he was a head coach in the Big Ten. Well, it's not this Big Ten because it didn't have Rutgers. It didn't have you know all these other schools. So he's still coaching the Big Ten. He coached at Wisconsin, who is a dominant football program. So why is he not considered? So when he says who has the most Big Ten titles, well, he does. Coach Bielma has three of them. They won three straight from 2010 to 2012, and then he left to go to Arkansas. So they have three straight Big Ten titles. Coach Bielma at Wisconsin, he was there for seven years as the head coach. I think he was one of the youngest head coaches in the country, if not the youngest. Um, they went 68 and 24 under his tenure at Wisconsin. Um, then he got five years at Arkansas. They went 29 34. And then at Illinois, he is 13 and 12. Overall, he's 110 and 70. Um, you know, he has one of the highest win marks at Wisconsin, maybe the highest. I'm not sure. He's been to a lot of bowl games um, in his time. Uh, every year he was the head coach at Wisconsin. Uh, they did go to a bowl game and um, they won Big Ten titles. He won three straight. Um, they've been to the Rose Bowl two years in a row. Uh, they've been in the Capital One Bowl, big time bowl games. So he did a lot of good things while he was there. And then Arkansas, he was trying to rebuild that program up and then just didn't get to work out. Now he's at Illinois. So I don't know why Coach Bielma should be in that conversation as one of the best Big Ten coaches there is because of what he did at Arkansas as such a young head coach. And then still able to go to Arkansas. And now the record may not show up, but they were in a lot of tight, close games. And you know, they won a lot of close games and they lost a couple of close games as he was trying to rebuild it. Illinois has been in the same boat. They've won some big time games and they've lost some close games. Um, he's recruited really well. He does have three Big Ten titles under his belt as a head coach. So he does have a point when he says, hey, who has the most big uh, titles, Big Ten titles? Hmm, I'm asking. So that's why he is trying to sit there and say, hey, I know these guys are great coaches and they are fantastic coaches, but they don't have all the Big Ten titles that I did and the dominance we had at Wisconsin when I was there. And he's trying to poise that to get to that way in Illinois. The Big Ten is different than when he was there but because there's a ton of great coaches, ton of great coaches. The guys we just talked about, fantastic coaches. Um, and then, you know, all over the Big Ten, there's great coaches, there's great people, and it's just a really tough conference to be in. And then now – after this year, you're going to have UCLA and USC there. It's just going to ramp it up even more. But there is a case to be made for Coach Bill to be. I'm not. I, I, I could sit here and say he is the best Big Ten coach there is. Um, people are going to make a case for Ryan Day because he's 45 and six, has done great things in a short amount of time. Uh, they're going to say Jim Harbaugh because of what he's done recently. Um, people are going to say James Franklin because you know it's Penn State or a competitive year in and year out. Um, they're great coaches, and there's arguments to be made for everybody. But if you're talking about just Big Ten, there's a case to be made that Coach Bielema, I know he's 110 and 70 um, with his time at Wisconsin, or overall, but his time at Wisconsin, 68 and 24. If you want to combine that with the Illinois record and add on to his Big Ten thing, and so that's why you make a case for the other guys, I get it. There is a case. But I don't think you could sit there and talk about the best coaches in the Big Ten without bringing Coach Bielema's name in there because we do have to 
respect and bring up the fact of his Wisconsin times to this. So I, I think that there's a case to be made there that we just need to remember. And then look at what he's done now. The, the, the NFL prospects that got sent there, I know he didn't necessarily recruit all of those guys, but they had to develop them. The type of They're going to have a top defensive line in the, in the Big Ten, if not the country. They're going to have one of the best left sides of the offensive line in the whole Big Ten, if not the country. The wide receivers are going to take a step forward. Uh, we're going to you know, find out some of the hires he had to make with his coaching staff. The type of recruits he's getting in or fitting into Illinois. He is flip-flopping recruits away from the other Power Five programs. So time's going to – Time tells everything when we finally get to see it, but I think that when you make those cases for coaches of being the best in the Big Ten, it's disrespectful to not have Coach Bielma's name there just because he he doesn't disappear. He left out of the Big Ten, and then you're not going to put him in there. And then no offense, Coach Fickle, great coach, did some fantastic things at Cincinnati. And I, when he came to Wisconsin, I said, oh, shoot. Like that's was he's going to get Wisconsin to be very competitive, and so that's just adding things to Illinois' plate. Um, it's going to make Illinois better, obviously, to have to play them, and, and how Coach Fickle is going to get it done. Maybe not necessarily year one, but he's going to be there. So he's done great things. I just don't know why you would put him there above Coach Bielma, um, especially when Coach Bielma's coach in the Big Ten and coached in the SEC, and now back in the Big Ten. So disrespectful not put his name up there. Um, so he's got to be considered in that. Um, make sure you're liking, subscribing to the YouTube channel. Follow it right on Apple and iTunes and Spotify. They have different things on Spotify now to do that. Um, check out all the affiliates in the description below. Leave a comment in the comment section down below as well. Check out all the other videos. Be on the lookout for other videos coming out, different talks with coaches, and we're trying to get some other big-time guests on. Um, and then we're getting closer to college football season where we're going to talk Illinois football the whole time, getting closer to the NFL stuff. So we'll have our bear down segments coming back. Check out all that stuff. But a lot of great talks coming your guys' way. Um, if you guys want to listen to some high school coaches talk about their lives and their coaching careers and some college football coaches coming on to talk about, you know, anything from scheme to life to leadership to that word culture everybody throws around. It's great talks. It's great talks. Um, thank you guys again for watching and or listening. This is Coach Steve, and we'll see you guys next time.